Hi, my name is Rich Harrington, and welcome to this edition of the Photoshop CS4 Sneak Peek Podcast. Today, we're going to take a look at a powerful new feature called Auto Blend, which really works great when making things like panoramic photos or photo collages. In fact, this is an extension of the photo merge technology that's been in Photoshop for a while, but it's much more useful. Let's see how it works. What you're going to want to do is go ahead and say File, Scripts, and choose to load multiple files into a stack. Now, what you're talking about here is sometimes you're going to have an object that's too big to fit into the frame. Maybe you just can't get far enough back, or you have to take a series of photos and combine them together. Or this also works if you have a two-part scan, like you've had to cut a document and scan it into two different pieces because it was too big for your scanner. So I'm going to go ahead and choose Browse and navigate to a couple of images here. And this is an Android, actually, from the National Air and Space Museum here in Washington, DC. I'm going to go ahead and click Open, and we'll say OK. Now, what's happening here is it's going to take two different documents and load them into a single file. And that's what happened. You see here we have the bottom half of the Android and the top half. And to be honest, I purposefully took the top picture a little bit crooked. That was to really show off just how well this technology works. It's going to go ahead and apply geometric distortion to actually bend the two photos so they can get stitched back together. So, you go ahead and shift click to select all the layers that are going to be a part of this auto blend. Grab the move tool and up here in the options bar you have several options. The one you want here is the auto align. Now, you have to align the layers before you actually go ahead and blend them. And auto align was in Photoshop CS3. We can also choose edit auto align layers and it does the same thing. Now, an updated dialog box opens and you can do things like remove vignette if you have that in your camera data or perform a geometric distortion and this will actually bend the image, helps remove fisheye, things like that. Now for most cases auto is going to work just fine so we'll go ahead and click OK and it analyzes the contents of the image, repositions the two layers in this case and will attempt to get them so the photo is no longer distorted. Now this works on more than two layers, but in this example we're just using a two-part photo. So the image has been bent and distorted and made to fit again, and you see that the two layers actually do line up. That the straight lines are there for the case, and that works great. What's not so great is this middle area here. If you look, you see we have a little bit of things not lining up exactly right, and a little bit of differentiation there and exposure between the two images. No big deal. With both layers selected, you simply choose Edit, Auto Blend Layers. And it's going to go ahead, look at that, and you say, you know, let's treat this as a panorama image where there's multiple photos being combined together to make a single image. Make sure the Seamless Tones and Colors box is checked as well. By using this option, it'll actually look at the exposure and tonal value inside the image and attempt to adjust as it merges the layers together. Go ahead and click OK, and it's going to take just a second as it thinks, and notice it's created a seamless blend. If we turn one of these layers off, you'll see in fact that it actually did a very detailed trace around the edges of the image and used layer masks to non-destructively blend those two layers together. We'll go ahead and zoom this out so it fits, and let's just take that full screen. There we go. And at this point, of course, you'd need to do a quick crop on the image. But you see we have successfully captured the photo, blending the two images together. And this auto blend just works great. Combine it with auto align, and you can get a lot of cool things within Photoshop. Now, this also works for another type of feature, which is where you want to take multiple exposures and merge them together. They call this expanded depth of field. So if you're shooting in different lighting conditions and you can't get the same range or having problems with your depth of field, you can actually take multiple exposures and merge them together. You do this by saying File, Scripts, Load Files into Stack. Simply browse and locate a few exposures for the image. You could then go ahead and click Open. 
it loads them in here, and then simply choose to automatically align the source images. Now that option is if you know the camera might have gotten bumped throughout this as you were adjusting the exposure on the camera. If you're quite certain that there's no bumping or slight repositioning of the frame, then you can leave that option unchecked. It's really up to you. Go ahead and click OK. You see that we have three copies of the same image loaded into the scene. I have different depth of fields within the image here. In the lower light, we don't have quite as many things in focus. We can then go ahead and select all the layers and choose Edit Auto Blend. Now, instead of specifying that it's a panorama, you just simply want to say that these are stacked images and choose the Seamless Tones and Colors option. When you click OK, Photoshop will analyze the different layers and then mask between them to create the greatest depth of field and blend the exposures together. Depending upon the resolution of your image, this may take a little bit of time, but the results are worth it. So, there you have it. You see that it's used layer masks to actually take parts of the image and combine those. Here it's taking the brighter areas and combining those with the darker parts of the image to really produce a nice, more in focus image with an expanded depth of field. So, this auto blend and auto align work great together. If you've got a multi-part image like a collage or a panorama, you can go ahead and use the auto align first. Then, once you've got them stacked or multiple exposures combined, simply choose auto blend. Remember, you'll find both of those under the edit menu, auto align and auto blend. And they're a great part of Photoshop CS4. So, that's it for this episode. I hope you learned some of the new things that you could do with Photoshop CS4. It's a very cool release with lots of great new features that really make it easier to get the job done. Go ahead and visit cs4.com. We could find out additional information, enter our contest, and find all of the episodes in one place. And if you enjoy our training, be sure to check out our regular series. We offer two free weekly podcasts all about Photoshop. The first is called Understanding Adobe Photoshop. It's designed for people who work in digital photography, graphic design, or just generalists who want to get more out of what Photoshop offers. For those of you who work in video and motion graphics, we offer another show called Photoshop for Video. And this show is all about using Photoshop to create content for professional video production. Thanks again for joining us. I'm Rich Harrington.